Chapter 3.1 Characteristics of Polynomial Functions Given the general form of a polynomial, which is p of x equals a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 x to the n minus 2 plus dot 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 plus a 1 x to the 1 plus a 0 where n equals a whole number x equals a variable and a n through a 1 are coefficients and a 0 is a constant term. Let's look at two examples. We have f of x equals 2x minus 5 and y equals x to the power of 4 plus 3x to the power of 3 minus 5x plus 10. Let's do the degree for each. So what is degree? We should know from math 10c and 20-1 that degree is the largest degree of the monomials. So look at your monomials in your polynomial function and determine the degree of each. Looking at the first one, 2x minus 5, the degree of 2x is 1 because it's x to the power of 1. The degree of 5 is 0 because it would have uh, be 5 times x to the power of 0. So the largest degree of the monomials would be 1 in that example. In the next one, the degree of this term would be 4, degree of this term would be 3, degree of this term would be 1, and degree of this constant would be 0. So our largest degree was 4. Next, the leading coefficient, that is the coefficient of the largest degree monomial. So it's connected to the degree. The term that gave us the degree, so the monomial with the highest degree, we want to look at the coefficient that's attached to that. So in f of x equals 2x to the 1 minus 5, our leading coefficient would be 2 because 2x is the highest degree term. So we get 2. In the next term, our highest degree monomial was x to the power of 4. The leading coefficient would be a 1. If you just have x or x to the power of something, the coefficient is positive 1. So our two numbers for degree and leading coefficient of 2x to the 1 minus 5 came from the term 2x which is 2x to the 1. The 1, the degree, is the degree of our polynomial, and the 2 from this monomial is our leading coefficient. Over here, the term was x to the power of 4, which is the same as 1x to the power of 4. So our degree was the exponent on that term, and our leading coefficient was the coefficient of that term. Next, the constant term. This is the term with no variable. In f of x equals 2x minus 5, it would be minus 5. And in y equals x squared plus 3x to the 3 minus 5x plus 10, it would be 10. We could write a constant term with a variable if we put the variable to the power of 0. So we would have a0 is the coefficient on this term, and then we could write x to the power of 0. x to the power of 0 is 1. Any non-zero number to the power of 0 is 1. So we'd have a0 times 1, which gives us a0. Polynomial functions cannot have the root of a variable, like square root of x, or x to the power of 1 half, because that is equal to the square root of x. These are not polynomials, because these are called radical functions, as we've already seen.
polynomial functions cannot have negative or fractional powers of a variable. For example, x to the power of negative 2. This from Math 10c exponent laws we know is 1 over x to the power of 2, which then becomes a rational. So this would be a rational function, not a polynomial function. And x to the power of 5 over 3, again from our exponent laws from Math 10c, a fraction exponent of 5 over 3 is the same as the cube root of x to the power of 5. So now that becomes a radical function. Not a polynomial function. And any non-real coefficients. So we need to have real number coefficients. An example of a non-real coefficient is the square root of negative 3. Square root of a negative number is a non-real number. Which of the following are polynomial functions and why? So again, we cannot have a root of a variable, like square root of x squared or x to the power of 1 half, a negative or fractional power of a variable, and we have to have all real coefficients, so no square roots of negative numbers. First one, f of x equals 5x to the power of 4 minus square root of 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. So the first term, 5x to the power of 4, that's all fine. We've got a real coefficient and a positive whole number exponent. The third term as well, real coefficient, positive whole number exponent. And then we have a constant term that's a real coefficient. This term here is where it looks like there could be a problem. We have minus the square root of 3x squared. So we technically have a variable under a root, but let's take a closer look at that. From our exponent laws, way back in Math 10c, the square root of 3x squared can be written as 3x squared to the power of 1 half, because the square root is the fractional exponent 1 half. Then we can use the power of a product law to distribute that 1 half into the product, and we get 3 to the power of 1 half x squared to the power of 1 half. And then we can use the power of a power law to apply that to the x squared, and we get 3 to the power of 1 half and x to the power of 2 times 1 half, which is 2 over 2, which is 1, so just x. And then I can rewrite the 3 to the 1 half as the square root of 3 times x outside the root. So because it was the square root of x squared, remember squaring and square rooting are opposite operations, so those essentially undo each other. So then we can write f of x as f of x equals 5x to the power of 4 minus the square root of 3 times x minus 4x plus 1. So then we can say, yes, it is a polynomial. All the coefficients are real numbers, and all the variables have positive whole number exponents. b f of x equals 1 over x. Using the negative exponent law from math 10c, we can write this with the x on top, and it becomes x to the power of negative 1. And then we know that this is not a polynomial because we have a negative exponent on the variable. We have to have positive whole number exponents on the variables, or polynomials. 
part c f of x equals the absolute value of 3x squared minus 2x to the power of 5 plus 4. If we have a absolute value in our function, normally we would call that, that would be an absolute value function. But in this case, let's take a closer look at that term. It's absolute value of 3x squared. The absolute value means the positive of whatever 3x squared is. So we're always taking the positive. Well, 3 is a positive. And x squared, whatever we put in for x, whether it's positive or negative, x squared will be a positive. So we've got positive 3 times a positive number, which would always equal a positive anyways. So we can rewrite this function as f of x equals 3x squared minus 2x to the power of 5 plus 4. So yes, it's a polynomial because we have positive whole number exponents on the variables and real number coefficients. d f of x equals x to the power of 1 half minus 7. We can tell right away, no, this is not a polynomial because we have a fraction exponent on the variable. The following graphs are of even degree polynomials. Make a generalization about the end behavior of even degree polynomials. Let's also make a, some statements about um, x-intercepts, domain and range, and vertex. So the top row here, we have quadratics, f of x equals x squared, f of x equals negative x squared, f of x equals x squared minus x plus 6, and f of x equals negative x squared minus 8x minus 7. What do we notice about quadratics? We should be pretty familiar with them from math 20-1. We know that if they have a positive a value, and the a value is the coefficient on the x squared term, so that would be the leading coefficient for a quadratic. If it has a positive leading coefficient, it will open up. If it has a negative le leading coefficient, like this one does, and this one does, when it's in standard form, the a value is negative, then it's gonna open downward. We also know that quadratics have a max or a min point. The vertex is a minimum point if the graph opens up and a maximum point if the graph opens down. We also know that quadratics can have 0, 1, or 2 x-intercepts. For example, this one here, the third one, has 0 x-intercepts. This one here looks like it has one x-intercept, which would be the vertex, and then this one has two x-intercepts. The next row, these are quartic polynomial functions, which means that our degree of our polynomial is four. We have f of x equals x to the power of four, and we see that that one opens up. Kinda looks like a quadratic, but it's really wide down here. We have f of x equals negative x to the power of 4, which is the same as the first one, except it's opening down. Then we have f of x equals x to the power of 4 minus 4x to the power of 3 plus x squared plus 7x minus 3, which looks like this, where we have kind of a w shape, and it's opening up. And then we have negative x to the power of 4 plus 7x squared minus 5, 
which all has kind of an M shape and is opening down. And we see with the first two, it kind of looks like they maybe have one x-intercept. And with the next two, we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So some statements that we can make about even degreed polynomials. Let's look at two different cases based on the a value. So first with a positive a value. Polynomials with even degree that have a positive a value, they're going to open up, which means the end behavior will be up in quadrant 1 and 2. We look at this one here. Our end behavior is what's happening to the values of y as x gets bigger. So as we are going outward, either direction, our y values are just getting bigger. The ends of the graph are going up in quadrant 1 and 2. We can also state this as, as x approaches positive or negative infinity, y approaches infinity. Another thing we can say about even degree polynomials with positive a values is that they have a minimum. So the vertex is a minimum. If it opens up, it's going to have a minimum. About the x-intercepts, we can have no x-intercepts, but the maximum max number is the degree of the polynomial. So if we have a quadratic, we could have 0, 1, or 2 x-intercepts because our degree of our polynomial is 2. Then let's state the domain. Even degree and odd degree, positive and negative a value, the domain of a polynomial is x such that x, e, r all real values for x. For the range, it's a little different. For even degree positive a value polynomials, we have y such that y is greater than or equal to our minimum value, y, e, r. So whether the polynomial is degree 2 or 4 or 6 or whatever even number, if the a value is positive, then the polynomial is going to open up, which means it will have a range y greater than or equal to whatever the minimum value is. Now let's look at when we have negative a value. A negative a value with a even degree polynomial polynomial is going to open down, which means our end behavior will be down in quadrants 3 and 4, or we could write this as x approaches positive or negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Looking at an example, this one here, as we continue going, the ends of the graph, the end behavior is heading down, so to y equals negative infinity. Even degree polynomials with a negative a value open down, so they have a maximum value. The x-intercept situation is the same with 
negative A values as it is with positive A values. For even degree polynomials, they can have no x intercepts, but the max number is the degree of the polynomial. Again, domain is the same for even and odd polynomials, whether they have a positive or negative a value. x such that x, e, r, all the real values, and range. This time we have a maximum value, so y such that y is less than or equal to r maximum value, y, e, r. The following graphs are of odd degree polynomials. Let's do the same thing, make a generalization about the end behavior of odd degree polynomials, and we'll also mention the x-intercepts, the vertex, and domain and range. Let's look at our graphs. The first one is a linear function, so the degree is 1, x to the power of 1, and that just creates a straight line. Next is negative x plus 4, that's also linear, so we get a straight line. Next is x to the power of 3, which is a cubic function, and we get this kind of curvy line. And then negative x to the 3, f of x equals x to the power of 3 minus 2x squared minus 2x plus 6. It's a curvy line with a little more distinctive curves. Negative x to the power of 3 plus 7x. Same thing, curvy line, but quite big ups and downs here. f of x equals x to the power of 5. That's a quintic, so it looks quite a lot like a cubic that case. And then here's another quintic, negative x to the 5 minus 4x to the 4 plus 40x to the 3 plus 160x squared minus 144x minus 576. So we see it's got quite a few curves, up and down, up and down. So let's break this up again into positive a value and negative a value. So if I look at all my negative a value functions. There's one, there's one, there's one, and the last one. What do I notice? Going from left to right, all of the graphs go from quadrant 2 down to quadrant 4. 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 Okay, if we look at our positive A values, they all go from quadrant left from left to right. They all go from quadrant 3 up to quadrant 1. 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 So that tells us our end behavior. Doing the same thing we did above, starting with positive a values. So positive a value odd degree polynomials are going to start in quadrant 3 and go up to quadrant 1. Or we could say another way of describing the end behavior would be as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity, and as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity. If we look at an example, 
If we are heading this way in the x direction, what's happening with our graph? It is going down and left. So as x is getting smaller, going to negative infinity, y is also getting smaller, going to negative infinity. As we head to the right, towards x equals positive infinity, our graph is going up to the right. So y is getting bigger, heading towards positive infinity. Let's make a note up here about max and min, so I don't have to write it twice. Odd degree polynomials don't have a max or min value because they keep going in both directions. So there's never a point where they stop going up or never a point where they stop going down. Let's talk about the x-intercepts. What do we notice about the x-intercepts here? We should see that all of our functions have at least one x-intercept. And that makes sense because the we just said the odd degree polynomials don't have a max or min. They continue going up and down forever. So if they're going up and down forever, they're going to have to cross the x-axis. So they're always going to have at least one x-intercept. But also the max number of x-intercepts is the degree of the polynomial. Domain. As I said above, domain of even and odd polynomials is the same. It's all values of x, so x such that x, e, r. Range for odd degree polynomials. It continues going up and down forever, so range is y such that y, e, r. Let's do the same for negative a values. Looking at some examples here of our negative ones, there's this one, so it starts in quadrant two and it goes down to quadrant four here, starting in quadrant two, down to quadrant four. Start in quadrant two and go down to quadrant four. You could also say as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches infinity, because as we go this way with our x values, our y values are getting higher. And as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. As our x values are getting bigger this way, our graph is going down, so our y values are getting smaller. Then again with the x-intercepts, we have at least one x-intercept, but max number of x-intercepts is the degree of the polynomial. Domain, same as our other polynomials, x such that x, e, r, and range, same as polynomials of odd degree with positive a values. They continue going up and down forever, so y, e, r.
So to summarize chapter 3.1, if our n value, which represents the degree of the polynomial, is an even number and our leading coefficient, So if we have a even degree and if our leading coefficient is greater than zero, then we're gonna have a graph that opens upward where both ends are going upward. The next situation, if we have an even degree polynomial and our a value is less than zero, so a is negative, then we will have both ends of the graph going in the same direction and they will be heading downward. Then we saw that if n is odd, so our polynomial is of odd degree, and the leading coefficient is greater than zero, then our graph is going to start in quadrant three and go up to quadrant two. So the two ends are going in opposite directions. And finally, we saw that if we have an odd degree polynomial with a leading coefficient that is less than zero, so negative, then our graph is going to start in quadrant two and go down to quadrant four. And again, our ends are going in opposite directions. Classifying polynomials. Polynomials can be classified by the number of terms. So monomial, which is one term. A binomial is two terms trinomial, three terms, and so on. They could be classified by degree. If we have just a constant, so just like the number five, it's still a polynomial, it is two degrees zero, so x to the zero. Linear would have degree one, x to the power of one. Quadratic has x to the power of two. Cubic has x to the power of three. Quartic, x to the power of four and quintic x to the power of five, and so on. We could classify polynomials by their end behavior, which is the behavior of y as x becomes larger. So as x approaches positive and negative infinity, what is happening with the y value? And then we can classify polynomials by the domain range, by the number of x-intercepts. We know that the max number of x-intercepts for a polynomial is the degree of the polynomial. We also saw that odd degree polynomials have at least one x-intercept. Even degree polynomials can have zero x-intercepts, but odd degree polynomials, because the two ends go in opposite direction, the graph is gonna to have to cross the x-axis, so we have at least one x-intercept. And finally, we can classify polynomials by the type of coefficient. So do they have integral coefficients, which just means integers? Or do they have rational coefficients, which means fractions? Do we have real number coefficients, which includes integers? and fractions and irrational numbers. Describe the end behavior of the graph of the function f of x equals negative x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. State the x-intercepts, y-intercept, and if the graph has a maximum or minimum. Choose the correct graph. Okay, so we see that our degree the degree of our polynomial is three because 
that is the highest degree of any of the monomials. And our leading coefficient is negative one because the x cubed term has a negative in front, so negative one x cubed. Since it's an odd degree polynomial with a negative coefficient, then we know that it's gonna go from quadrant two down to quadrant four. So we can look at our graphs, which one goes from quadrant two down to quadrant four. We have, this one starts in quadrant two and goes down to quadrant four, so that could be a possibility. This one starts in two, quadrant two and goes down to quadrant four, so that could be a possibility. This one starts in quadrant three and goes up to quadrant one, so that would have to be a positive leading coefficient, and this one is the same, it starts in quadrant three and goes up to quadrant one, so that would need to be a positive leading coefficient. So I can cross these two off as options, and I'm left with A and C. Another thing we can look at from, just from the equation, not using our calculator or doing any algebra, is the y-intercept. The function's in standard form, which means the y-intercept is the constant term which is one. So looking back at our two graphs, A and C, which one has a y-intercept at one? Well, this one is at negative one, this one's at one. So we can now decide that C is the appropriate graph for this function. What else did we want? We want to state the x-intercept, the y-intercept, so we did that. We've got that part, and if the graph has a maximum or minimum, and choose the correct graph. So we've chosen the correct graph. So we need to do x-intercepts, and we need to do the max or min. So it is a cubic function. Do cubic functions have maximum or minimum values? No, they don't, because they continue going up forever, right? One of our arms or one of our ends is going up forever and one of our ends is going down forever. So they're going to infinity. Therefore there is no max min because degree is odd. So we've done the max min part. All we have left is to do the x-intercepts, and we don't know how to do that algebraically for this type of function yet, so let's use our graphing calculator. Clear what's in there, enter our function, negative x to the power of three, move to the right to get out of my exponent, minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, minus x to the power of 3, minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Good. Looks correct. Graph that, and I can see my x-intercepts. If you can't see your x-intercepts, change your window. You could even use standard. So I want to find my x-intercepts second trace number two. I'm going to start with the one on the farthest left. So left bound of that point is above. Hit enter. Right of that x-intercept would be below it. Hit enter. And the zero is negative 3.491. We are using our calculator x equals negative 3.491. Next one, second trace number two. Now I want to find this x-intercept that's just to the left of the um, x equals zero. So below that would be left, hit enter. Above that would be right, hit enter. And it's negative 0.344.
And last one, second trace number two, left of the last x intercept would be above it, hit enter, right of the last x intercept would be below it, hit enter, and it's 0 0.834. Okay, did we do everything? So we got our x-intercepts. Describe the end behavior for the graph. So we kind of did that here. But we can also write that maybe over here. End behavior as x approaches negative infinity. Let's take a look. As we go this way with our x values, this part of our graph is going up, so y is approaching positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. And looking the other way, as x approaches positive infinity, our graph is going down, so y is approaching negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. There we go, we got our end behavior, we've got our x-intercepts, our y-intercept, uh, we talked about that it doesn't have a max or min, and we found the correct graph. That brings us to the end of chapter 3, lesson 1.